This is it. It's not a film till it's edited. You have control over a multi-million dollar product. I'm sitting here and they spend 150 million on a film. This is where the film is made. You have to see each thing as a scene and you build the scene, do the best you can with each scene. And then when it melds together, that's when you get the full force. There is just a, a pacing that is so emotional for me, so profoundly, deeply felt. Mike Kahn's choices of how long to let the characters look at each other and study each other and, th and think about how they're feeling, that was all done in the editing room. Meeting of the minds between those two great men happened in the editing room. I said, Steve, I want to run this scene for you. And he says, uh, he's okay, and I run this scene, he looks at me, he said, I'll see you in the morning. He walked out, he was so emotionally involved with the scene, he couldn't believe that he shot it, it was so real. We we're all terribly affected by the film. There's something inside that takes over. But it's very emotional when there are problems in people's lives. Something emotional takes over that's beyond your conscious mind. It was the same thing, and I realized that, that editing features, was, it had nothing to do with knowledge. It, was, it had to do with how you feel if, about something. You're trying to make something work, and, and, and intuitively you, you feel something. And I had to learn to come in contact with that, because everybody talks about what they did this, that. A lot of the other editors, they're really, really good at speaking. Well, with Steven, certainly, I, I cut for him. I edit for him, and he makes his adjustments, and I do it. He shows it to some trusted people. That's what's great about Steven. If he has a feeling that something works, he goes with his feeling. You've got to have a strong argument to get him away from that. And he always says, he and George, they say they shoot for the editing room. Steve was looking for somebody, and I went into his office, and I met him. And, but, but then when I walked out, he said, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know, right? Three, four days later, I get a call on the phone, and he says, why don't you meet me out at Devil's Tower, Wyoming, and work on this picture? And that's what happened. What was different was he was incredibly knowledgeable. He liked that I was straightforward and honest, and that's, that's the kind of relationship we have. If he asks me to do something and I have trouble doing it, I, I say, hey, Steve, you better help me out on this. But there's an honesty there. We're not ashamed that, you know, if I try to cut a scene a different way, he likes that because maybe he'll give him another point of view. But then again, if it doesn't work, then he'll help me make it work, and I've eliminated that option. Normally we run together, he selects his takes, and then I put it together and all that kind of thing. Just like every other editor. The other thing is his range of knowledge is mind-boggling. The beautiful thing about editing is, I guess maybe writers feel that way, I see all that film up there, it doesn't matter. One piece at a time, one scene at a time, one cut at a time. Same thing with editors and directors. There's something in there that allows you to say, this feels right, this is good. They would react this way. You know, it's a feeling. If Stephen agrees or doesn't agree, we'll make the changes and we're, we're putting something out there that millions of people are reacting to. That makes me feel pretty damn good. Thank you so much, Stephen, for so many remarkable years we shared together editing these movies. When you love your work and you work with people you love, editing transforms itself into more than just work. It becomes your passion and your life.